Just wanted to give you a quick overview of my uh, DIY Long John Carbogo bike that I made last summer. This is a really fun project <clears throat> that I did and uh, it's a dual hub drive. Um, puts out probably, you can get over 3000 watts if I uh, wanted to set it up that way. Um, yeah, it's uh, got a lot of torque for carrying heavy loads up steep hills. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to build, so I'll give you a little overview here. All right, so I'll start in the front here. This is a, uh, a Grin Technologies, uh, the version two of their direct drive hub. Um, so with this uh, dual hub system, I used a direct drive in the front and a geared hub motor in the back. This is an easy geared hub motor. Now the reason I did that is because the, uh, the wheels are two different sizes and it'd be really tricky to get two direct drive motors that um, matched each other perfectly. And I really wanted a direct drive motor so that I could utilize the braking powder, the power, the regenerative braking. Um, you don't, it doesn't put a ton back on the battery. It does put about, you know, five to eight percent, but uh, it really saves on brake pads. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it works extremely well. Um, so yeah, it's the Grin Hub motor in the front, right there. As you can tell, I've been Riding it in the rain and the snow, it's all uh, it's all pretty dirty, but uh, that's the way it goes. You ride all year round. Um, and then in the back here is that easy motor. This is the uh, slow wind easy motor that I have in the back. So it's uh, geared and it's a freewheeling hub. The drivetrain system is a SRAM X X5. It was a brand new setup that I that I bought, pretty inexpensive, and I'm I'm actually really happy with how it works. It's uh, it shifts flawlessly. SRAM has that sort of one to one shifting ratio. I'd never used it before, and it's it's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, you got the Easy 250 RPM in the back, the Grin Fast Wind in the front. Um, in a second, I'll show you the bottom. That's where the controllers and batteries are. But for now, I'll just show you the rest of it. So I have the uh, brake light here that ties into the 36 volt system. So you never have to, never have to change tiny little batteries separately. Um, right here, I've got my little cycle analyst system, or sorry, static cycle analyst with the display so it's easy to see. Um, and I decided to put it down there so it kind of frees up my handlebar real estate because I wanted room to be able to mount my phone there for directions and things like that. This is the new version of the Cycle Analyst, so it's got the uh, adjustments on the fly here. Sorry, adjustments on the fly here, as well as the uh, on-off switch on the top there. Um, uh, because I was using sort of rapid fire shifters with the SRAM XS, or sorry, SRAM X5 system, um, I couldn't fit like a thumb throttle under here, and so I ended up using a, a twist uh, motorcycle half half twist throttle, and uh, it works really well. Um, on the left here, I have this is a, a auxiliary potentiometer. Um, right now, I have it set up as an amplifier for the uh, the pedal assist. So it's got the, the throttle as well as the pedal assist. And you can see as I adjust the pedal assist there, it tells you the multiplier of the, the input, the input uh, watts from my, from my legs and uh, translates that through that multiplier. Um, I also got this really cool headlight system. Um, it also ties into the 36 volt system. So you never have to worry about a separate battery setup. It, uh, there we go. It uh, turns high beam, low beam, sorry, high beam, low beam, and then that is just kind of like a running light system. Um, so I can show you in a sec here. 
Actually, I'll, I'll do a cut in later. Um, so yeah, <coughs> the bottom here I have a, uh, a, a PAS sensor. Wire comes out the side, which is nice. Some of the other systems you had to, hopefully you can see that. Some of the other systems you had to drill through the bottom bracket. The system's really nice because it comes out the, the side and then I have it um, underneath going along through this, this uh, down tube that I made there um, up to the controller, which I will show you in a second. Or sorry, actually this goes to the CA, but it gets routed through there. Um, yeah. All right, so I just tipped, this, tipped it over on its side. It's actually really easy to, to do that with this, which is kind of nice. It really assists in um, changing flats. I've only had one so far, but it definitely made it easier because as you can see, it keeps the, the wheels right off the ground. It lies on the box that I made there. And then, yeah, you get a good shot of the undercarriage. So here, um, what I have is I have two base runner controllers. So there's one feeding the easy at the back right there, and then you have the another base runner at the front there, feeding the, the Grin Hub at the front. Um, these, are, these are pretty good. As you can see, I've got them mounted directly onto this aluminum check plate that I've got on the bottom, and the heat mounts, or sorry, the heat uh, sinks from the base runner actually mounted right into that aluminum plate, so it really helps with heat dispersion. Um, I think, I remember, I think I put a little bit of a, 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 bit of, a bunch of um, heat transfer uh, paste in between there as well, and it works remarkably well. I've never had any issues with thermal roll back in the controller itself. Um, underneath here for the batteries, I have uh, 17 LIGO batteries, and uh, I just kind of made this mounting system to wedge it in. I hadn't, I hadn't actually planned this, but when I made it, it turned out that the distance between this main strut going through and the side strut on the side was almost exactly a perfect distance to fit a LIGO in between and then all the kind of LIGO connectors kind of go along this side here and I use this piece of, uh, of ripped, um, uh, I don't know what you call that, it's not PVC, yeah I guess it is PVC uh, piping to kind of keep it all neat and tidy in there and so far that's that mounted in there really tight. Um, haven't had any batteries wiggle loose or any sort of issues. The nice thing about these base runner controllers is they're potted in epoxy, so there's been no issues with water ingress and, and things like that. And uh, yeah, you can see the armature that I made here for, for steering. I can't turn it right now because the, the, uh, the steering bars are, are pushing against the ground, but welded a nice piece of aluminum on there. It was uh, good practice. They aren't the best aluminum welds in the world, but it was definitely good practice for me, and uh, they're definitely nice and strong. Um, also did this aluminum kickstand underneath here. Works really well. Put some stainless steel bolts, like put a chunk in there. Sorry, I'll see if you can see that. I put a chunk of uh, aluminum about this far in there and drilled and uh, tapped it so that I can use these stainless steel bolts. Sorry, let me get that in focus. I can use these stainless steel bolts, and as they kind of wear down, I can I can replace them with new ones. And also having a bit of a sharp edge on those bolts helps it to kind of dig dig into the ground a little bit, um, which stops it from from moving. Um, yeah. Let's see. So yeah, this is sort of the kind of the box that I've made for it so far. Um, I still need some modifications, but uh, I had sort of a plastic container that I had mounted on the aluminum before and it was just kind of strapping it in, but I wanted something a little bit more permanent to, uh, to carry my dog around. This is Frankie. She likes going for rides down to the dog park. So, uh, as you can see, I have it set up for her with a little kind of padding piece from her kennel that I put in there. And yeah, she actually really loves hopping in and going for rides. You like going for rides, Frankie? It's pretty fun, eh? Yeah, anyway, it's, um, I had planned to kind of, you know, 
figure things out with this wooden one and then possibly coat it in, uh, in some fiberglass and paint it. But um, there's some modifications that I want to do to it. And it's obviously a work in progress. The, uh, the covers that I just had on there, I was hoping that they would articulate and kind of create a roof over top of her head, but then also be totally flat so that I could uh, carry some, some you know, materials or whatever right on top of there if I needed to. Um, so I haven't quite figured it out, but you know, it's uh, kind of a work in progress. And for now, it, uh, it works and you know, it's kind of got a nice utilitarian look to it. Uh, the only drawback is that I've been riding it through the winter now, and so some of the wood, um, you know, none of it's sealed at this point, and some of the wood is warped a little bit, like the uh, the panels that I've got that go on top, they've kind of they've slightly warped, which is uh, a little annoying, but anyway, they kind of fit on there nicely, and the idea is that they'll kind of both articulate up at either end and then I could maybe put a, a brace piece at the top and it would keep the, the wind out of her face and allow me to kind of lock stuff, stuff inside there eventually. But yeah, uh, I'm going to have some action footage later showing you how it works, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty amazing system. I went for 36 volts because you know there's no suspension. I have no real need for speed in this thing. Right now it goes up to 42 kilometers an hour if I want it to and I have to say with no suspension you don't really want to go much for faster than that. Um, however having the two hub motors gives you a lot of uh, a lot of thrust and, and torque so you know if this thing is totally full of of equipment or I've brought in some furniture from my shop and things like that it basically takes you up any hill like it doesn't even exist, which is really nice. Um, yeah, pretty uh, pretty fun build. Definitely a learning uh, opportunity. Helped me develop my welding a little bit. And uh, it's been great fun. Hopefully, uh, you know, once I figure out exactly how I want it to have, to have it set up and with the box, I want to have it kind of removable so I can just have it as a flat bed as well. Once I get all those details figured out, I'll, I'll finally paint the frame right now. It's just a, a primer paint so that it doesn't rust, which is held up pretty good. But um, yeah, I'll, uh, let me know what you think. I uh, will post some more videos of, of me riding it around town. And I'm also going to hopefully do a little demo of um, having one hub motor versus the two and do a little experiment to kind of see what the efficiency is like. Um, using one motor versus two, but um, yeah, there it is. All right, say bye, Frankie. Hey, bye.